Hi everyone and welcome back. Thanks again as always for tuning in and following my journey and today's vlog is going to be all about preparing for second year. I have done previous vlogs about second year and going into second year and the workload of second year so I'm hopefully gonna give you some new information to hopefully make you feel a little bit more prepared for second year maybe because I know there's a hundred hundreds of you stressing about second year because people tend to post things about second year it's the worst year the workload goes up all of that i'm hoping that i'm going to sort of put your mind at ease a little bit about second year and also help you prepare the best you can for second year depends what university as well this disclaimer that i always put out there it depends on your university and what they do in second year i can only talk about my own personal experiences and what birmingham city university do for second year so second year is a step up. As we all know, it goes from a level four to a level five criteria, marking criteria. And this is just more detail, basically. You need to be critically analyzing all of the time, whether it's physiology, whether it's exams, whether it's assignments, all of that. You need to be not just describing things, you need to be analyzing things. So you need to be picking things apart, looking at the pros and cons of everything. You need to have like a real critical discussion, like a little debate basically in your assignments. Um, and that's just gonna take you up to a level five and six. Also your references all need to be evidence-based. So everything you say has to be evidence-based. It's gonna be a lot more research-based. So go out there, look for studies and all of the evidence that says this is what you're saying you have to back up what you're saying with evidence and this is because as nurses that's what we have to do we have to use the best evidence out there that says this works this is why it works these are the studies that have said it works and this is why we do what we do and that's what we need to show in your assignments basically if that makes sense However, I do feel like there's a bit of a gap between first year and second year with the level four and level five jump because I don't remember in first year towards the end of first year ever really being sort of eased into level five marking criteria. There was no real explanation of it. But as you go into second year, they do explain that. Well, they did with us anyway. They sort of explain that, they explain the criteria. The marking criteria is visually online for us as well. So we know what they're marking and how to get those A stars. We just need to put it into practice. But just to prepare you for second year, I would just Google, I would YouTube critical analysis, how to do that properly in assignments. If I can find the links, I will post them below in the details. Have a look at that and hopefully they'll help you with that. Just make sure all of your references are more research based journals forget websites and things like that. Level five, level six marking criteria is that step up. So we need to be using evidence research. You need to be going on Cochrane Library, Sinal, Summon, whatever you use to find your evidence-based practice and research papers. If you have to go on Google Scholar as well, they always advise not to, but actually sometimes you find a really good paper sometimes on Google Scholar, but then go through the link to find the original source, not just Google Scholar. So then when you're referencing it, you're referencing it from the journal or the Cochrane Library or something, the proper place that it originated from, rather than put in Google Scholar 2019, don't do that. Um, just, yeah, have a look at that. Same with your physiology. So your physiology, you wanna know why everything's going on in the body. So when someone's got asthma, why can't they breathe? Why they're having that wheezy sound? You wanna rationalize everything and you wanna be thinking about your nursing interventions and monitoring. So if you have a patient in front of you that has asthma, what are you gonna do and why? Why would you give salbutamol? Why would you give oxygen? Why would you not give oxygen? What sort of mask would you use? What does the evidence say on that? What does the NICE guidelines say? Um, you wanna rationalize everything because when you're practicing as a nurse, you need to be confident that you can rationalize and justify the interventions you're giving to your patient to save their life and not put them at harm. And that's what it's all about, keeping your patients safe, alive, and getting them better again. So you wanna do that in, I know for our exams, this is what it's all about. Whether at other universities, they do different things. I'm not 100% sure what other universities do, but for us, we have case study patients like I've talked about in previous vlogs, and we need to rationalize and justify everything, why we're doing it, and actually what's physically going on in their body with their cells, their mucus, 
all of that, the goblet cells producing the mucus. We need to know every single detail, why it's happening, what the body response is, and how us as nurses are gonna fix it, and why the rationalization and the justification of that. And that is up level five, six, that's basically it. So I think my tips for preparing for second year is, like I said, look up critical analysis if you don't know already and you're not used to it, have a look how to do it, get used to doing it. Look at different research papers as well and see if you can work out what critical analysis is just from reading theirs. I would go on database searching. So I'd go on Cochrane Library, get your head around Cochrane Library if you've never used it before. Get your head around what an actual research paper looks like. So you'll have your abstract, you'll have your method section, you'll have your results section. It's like a proper study that's physically been done in one way or another. I would also look at maybe some more physiology in depth. Just top up your knowledge with the physiology and keep on top of it because sometimes when you haven't been at uni for a while, when you've had a break, you're doing other things and you sort of forget some things. And if you don't keep on top of it, you sort of feel like you've took a step back a little bit sometimes. So just keeping on top of the physiology as well. And that's not just for second year, that's for third year as well. Keep on top of the physiology. So when you go back into it and you've got the exam coming up, it doesn't seem as much as a shock. But my biggest tip of all, which I've said before, and I say regularly to people, organization. You have to be organized for second year. Second year for me is the heaviest year for workload it is all given to you so you're going to want to make sure you're on top of everything as soon as you have something launched a module launched you've got your assignment brief you've got your assignment guide look at it and start it take a look at it start something on it start researching around the topic that your assignment's on and get ahead of yourself even before they've started teaching you because at least if you get your ahead of yourself and you start you're a bit more of a head then and then as they're teaching it you can sort of adjust and tweak things as you go and that's just I think for me that's how I deal with things that's how I do it it's far better to be organized and on top of things and not falling behind and doing things last minute but I know some people can't do that I know a lot of you are lastminute.com and will literally just knock out assignments the night before I bow to you I don't know how you do it I can't do it I wish I could do it but I can't I do like to get it done out of the way and I don't stress about it but if you are that person that's fine do what you do best but do you know what? Everything is hard until you know how to do it. Does that make sense? So something is hard because it's unfamiliar to you. You don't know it. You've never heard of, let's just say, a goblet cell before. You don't know what it is. You don't know what it does. And then you struggle with it. You find it challenging. But actually, it's not really a challenge. It's just that you don't know it yet. And then when you revise it and you do it, it gets easier. It gets better. You understand it. And then you're like, ah, it wasn't such a challenge. After all, I do know this because now I've revised and learnt it. And that's just like life. <laughs> if you want to play a guitar, it's really hard. Ah, you haven't got a clue how to play a guitar. I'm talking about myself now. I don't know how to play a guitar. Um, but I, if I wanted to go out and play the guitar, I would YouTube it. I would get lessons and I would slowly build up until I can actually play a chord. And then I will strum a song or a tune or something. And I will eventually know how to play the guitar. But at the start, it'll be hard. It'll be challenging because I don't know it yet. It's unfamiliar. And that is just life in general. So I think what I'm trying to say is exams are only hard if you don't know it, but if you put the work in, if you put the graft in, if you revise it, you will know it. So when you get the question, you're like, I know this, tick, done, mark. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. The more you put in, the more you put into this degree, the more hard work you put in, the more revision you do, you're gonna smash it. And it's not easy, it is tough. It's really hard to balance life and workloads and everything. But once you get into a rhythm and a flow of doing things and you put the work in, you're gonna see those results and it's gonna be amazing. And I'm going to say, along with organization, prioritization. So know your deadlines, know what's due in first and do that first before anything else. Sometimes it's really hard to do that. I fully understand that because lately I've been all over my dissertation, which isn't due till October. And my poster presentation got left behind a little bit, which is due in, in September. So now I've sort of swapped them around and now I'm on my poster presentation and my dissertation's taken a step back. So prioritize everything, prioritize your workload, organize it, dedicate so many hours in the day to each thing if you want. Just come up with your own way of doing things and 
you'll be fine. You stop stressing, you'll be fine. You're gonna be amazing. Second year isn't that bad. It was tough. The workload was tough. It was stressful, but you know what? I got through it just like every other student has got through it. We've all passed. There are students that unfortunately didn't pass first time, but they smashed it the next time and that's okay. If you don't pass, you don't pass. At least you will have all of the feedback. You'll have the support there put in place to smash it next time and it's going to be amazing. So please don't panic about that. It does happen. It's not uncommon for people to not pass things and it's okay. It doesn't mean that you're a bad nurse. It doesn't mean that you're going to be rubbish. It doesn't mean that you're going to fail the whole degree. It just means that you need to take on the feedback and smash it next time. I've always been so focused on getting my first. Now I've taken a step back. I don't care. I'm not going to get my first now and that's okay because I know out there on practice, I've been smashing it. My placements, I've been smashing my placements. I know that I've saved lives. I know that I've recognized deteriorating patients and I know I'm going to be a safe, nurse and hopefully an amazing mentor to somebody one day hopefully i'm so excited for that so please don't please don't just don't erase it get it over with that's it but yes yeah, sidetracked anyway overall second year is amazing second year was genuinely my favorite year out of all of these years because i loved all of the modules ours was community based which you all know i am a community nurse through and through i love it so I was really happy to get that and it was up a step so it was thinking critically and it was thinking about rationalizing my own decisions my nursing decisions which I loved I love backing up things with evidence it's amazing and I really genuinely loved second year as hard as it was as tough as it was as much as the workload went up the level went up it was fine it I found it really good but I know not everybody is in this boat and I know a lot of students hate second year a lot of students really struggle second year I know a lot of students that have failed mainly second year but that doesn't mean that you are going to be that person that doesn't mean that you're going to hate second year it doesn't mean that you're going to struggle second year as long as you're organized and go into second year with a really positive mind positive attitude don't think about the negatives take on each day manage things bite size chunk by chunk you're going to be amazing please don't worry and if you do find yourself worrying if you do find yourself stressed if you're crying if you're having a mental breakdown if you're about to quit come and talk to me message me please inbox me i'm there for you i'm going to tell you how amazing you are you can blimmin do this and i'm going to get you going again so please do not even think about ever quitting anything until you've spoken to me because i'm going to get you back on there and you're going to be fine and you're going to be an amazing nurse and i think that's it i can't think of anything else any advice i can really give for second year just the workload does go up and be organized but Apart from that, there's not much else you can do to prepare for second year other than what I've said. If anyone else is in third year now or at the end of second year has any advice, tips, anything, please, please, please comment below for other people. Let us know your experience as well because not we don't all have the same experiences throughout university. Everybody is different, so it'd be really nice to see the different opinions and comments and things with second year. But it's really nice to give helpful advice and tips for other people that might be struggling and to tell your story as well to show that they're not in this alone and that we all do go through that. So yeah, but that is it from me for today. I shall see you next week and I hope you have an amazing day, amazing week and keep smiling.